Hey guys, what is going on? King Konger here. I really wanted to make a video like this for the longest time, ever since I've gotten my Twitch back after a seven year long ban. So how did I start on Twitch? Um, what happened during my golden years on Twitch? How did I get banned? And, and what did I do exactly during that super long ban? And how did I get it back? So this video is about that. Hopefully it's somewhat interesting. Um, Maybe someone can learn a couple things from this. Um, and uh, I think it's also because there's been a couple things that really bothered me over the years, especially people saying like um, that Twitch is going to fail and, and, and all this kind of stuff. So I just want to dive into everything and uh, let's just start at the beginning. So how did I start with streaming? So back when I was still super young, uh, in my early 20s, I was playing a lot of World of Warcraft. I think I recently actually calculated how many hours I played, and it was something like 27,000 hours, a ridiculous amount. I, I do think a lot of that time is also AFKing, though, so I'm not sure how much it actually is, but it is a silly amount. It's probably the game I played the most. I mean, it, it ruined my high school. I, I did finish it, though, but it, it somewhat ruined it because um, as a young kid... I would pretend to go to school and then I would wait to, to until my parents, their car would leave. And then I would go back home and start playing World of Warcraft. So that, 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 that's the kind of teenager I was. <laughs> I have no idea how I managed to finish school, but I eventually finished it. Um, so that's great. But yeah, World of Warcraft, I especially liked raiding uh, and playing PvP. And I was a big achievement hunter and mount collector. Um, so... Eventually, there was a new achievement called the Bloodthirsty, which means you had to get 250,000 honorable kills on a single character. So I was like, all right, how are we going to do this? So I ended up making um, World of Warcraft, I mean, uh, Alteric Valley pre-mates. So basically, I would get together 40 people and we would all have this add-on and that allowed us to queue at the exact same time, which would 99% of the time put the 40 people in the same Altric Valley instance. Meaning that we had a giant 40-man pre-made ready to farm the shit out of the alliance um, that we were facing. And they were not too happy about it. A lot of hate posts on the forums, uh, a lot of complaining. And I mean, I understand that it was not fun, but this is just how it was. And uh, eventually they changed it so the add-on wasn't possible anymore. But during that time, we thrived. I think I gotten like 500,000 honorable kills and I've gotten a lot of uh, other people their honorable kills. So yeah, I made these groups. I organized them and they got so popular because we had like the best players in the world. So, like even people from Paragon, we had like top rank one gladiators, uh, all kinds of people joining. And I was getting absolutely bombarded with whispers and requests to join. So at one point I was like, okay, I'm getting tired of all these whispers. How are we going to deal with this? So one of my uh, group members, like one of my regular group members, he knew about a website called Justin TV. This was back in 2011. This is also the year that it eventually changed to twitch.tv. <clears throat> but yeah, I made an account in September, I think it was 2011. And I had a shitty computer. I think it was even a square stream. I don't even know what program I used anymore to stream, but I figured something out and it worked. Um, and I instantly had like 10 to 50 viewers, mostly of people that just wanted to join. So that went really well. Um, and I kept doing that until Diablo 3 released in 2012. And some of the people that watched me or were part of the group in World of Warcraft, they kept watching me on Diablo 3. So I, w I had like a couple viewers. So it was easier for people to discover me. It was not like I was all the way down the list. I mean, with 10 viewers back in 2012, Twitch was still kind of new. Um, that was already decent exposure. Um, Diablo 3, it was very difficult. It was... Uh, not an easy game. I mean, we all remember the early starting days of Diablo 3. You would get one-shotted by these little mosquitoes in Act 2. And you absolutely needed a demon hunter friend to go through Act 4. 
I luckily had a real life friend playing that Demon Hunter. So uh, his name is Sapro. And he was helping me with that. Um, all the barbarians were playing with a sword and board. So like a sh uh, sword with a shield. I really disliked that. And I was thinking to myself, like, how am I going to play with a big fat two-hander? Because I really like two-hander gameplay. And I don't know anymore how I did it, but for some reason, we we made somewhat of a glass cannon barb with a two-hander. And it worked. It just it just worked. And for some reason, I decided not to sleep at a certain night because I wanted to keep farming. And all the big streamers, Kriparian and some other guys, they went offline and I was still online and people started browsing the directory and stumbled upon my stream and they saw a barbarian with a two-hander. So my viewer count that night went from 10 to 50 to 5,000. It was crazy. I did not know what was happening to me because I just played the game and I didn't think, you know, anyone would watch. <laughs> But suddenly there was all these people there and I didn't know how to react. And um, they all followed me. It was crazy. I eventually did go to bed and I thought this was a one-time thing. But then I went live the next day and we were at a couple thousand again. And this stayed for the entire year. I think we reached 40,000 subscribers on the next year. Uh, I mean, not subscribers, sorry, followers. So that was pretty quick in my first year of streaming ever. And this was when Twitch was still really young and not that big yet. There were no, uh, yeah, only fans girls yet. It was just gamers, only gamers. And um, yeah, it was kind of hard to get partner and all that. I actually got invited. Uh, you couldn't apply. You just, they would ask you to become a partner. So that happened. Um, but yeah, 2013, um, it, I, I basically quit school because, in, in, wait, we're still in 2012. So in 2012, I actually, because I was getting this popularity on Twitch and I started to make money from it, I was still studying. I think it was international business studies. That's literally what it was called. Not really high um, up. It was like a basically a, a normie study like a normie study because I, I never really did that well in school because i was always playing video games so i'm just kind of a dumb guy i I'm, I'm i'm scared to do an iq test but i really enjoyed making videos and i really enjoyed streaming and talking to people like especially the interaction like i live for the chat there was some drama as well um and and, and but mostly really good times um, so yeah, in 2013, we reached that 40k uh, followers, um, GTA 5 came out and I also met a girl who was also a streamer, Queen Bear, and I moved to Canada for her. So that was crazy. But next to Diablo, I also streamed a lot of GTA 5. So that was a lot of fun. And for some reason, people also watched me play that. I think in, in GTA 5. I also, again, made groups and we had like even this battle on top of a rooftop. It would take like 40 to 50 minutes just to get everyone up there uh, with their cars. And then there was like a destruction derby and the last car standing up there would win a prize. It was uh, a lot of fun, like a shit ton of fun, but also lots of Diablo 3. I think I only streamed Diablo 3 and then sometimes a couple other games. Um, Pet of Exile came out somewhere around that time as well. I think, was Pet of Exile 2013? Hold on, let's see. Pet of Exile release date. That was, yeah, 2013. 23 of October. Um, Pet of Exile. There was actually a lot of hate for Pet of Exile back then. That, that was very surprising to me because I was always like, okay, Diablo 3, it's kind of getting old. Um... And there's not any other ARPGs. It was just Diablo 3 and Diablo 2 and, and nothing else. So all of a sudden, Pad of Exo came out. And you know how it is in the gaming world. Um, when there's competition, uh, people are giant fans of a certain game. So if another game is trying to be somewhat the same, there's going to be a lot of hate for some reason. Um, personally, I thought it was fantastic. I was introduced to the game because of 
Kriparian. He was streaming it. I saw him stream it. It looked interesting. And I read up a little bit about it and I instantly dropped a thousand dollars in the game. Just like that. It was actually like after a couple of days of just watching the game and, and I instantly fell in love with it. So I dropped a thousand dollars on it and I designed my own item called Congress and Dying Rates. It's still in the game today. It's kind of useless now though, but uh, apparently it had a couple moments where uh, it was actually it was actually good. So uh, money well spent. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I'm just honored to have an item that uh, I, I created in the game. I, I think that is fantastic. But yeah, I played that a bit. Uh, my viewers didn't really like it. It was always battling, you know, like uh, if you're an ARPG streamer um, and you play anything else than that, what you're known for, um, people won't really stick around. They, they want to watch you play the game that you are known for. And that's it. And that's fine. I am okay with being an ARPG streamer, which is totally fine by me. I mean, I'm mostly known for Diablo 3. Even if I would play Diablo 3 now, I would have more viewers playing Diablo 3 than Diablo 4, for example. Because in Diablo 3, it's, I, I think around this time, even though it's so many years ago, it's just for nostalgia. Um, so I will play the new seasons whenever they come, if they're interesting. Um, but yeah, we'll see. I mean, the, the, it's such an exciting year right now for... Uh, for ARPGs with, with Last Epoch and, and Pet of Exile 2 around the corner. Amazing stuff is coming. But yeah, 2013 was actually a wonderful year. So I, I moved to Canada, got a girlfriend. Uh, GTA 5 was fantastic. I mean, everyone loves GTA. I mean, we're in 2024 and GTA 6 is around the corner and, and the world is going crazy. So yeah, we had a lot of fun in GTA. And we kept growing. We kept gaining followers. So, a year passes, and Diablo 3 is getting an expansion. It is 2014. I am very excited for Reaper Souls. The game comes out, and I think this is where I have the highest viewer count that I've ever had on my channel. We had 22,500 people watching me play Diablo 3 Reaper Souls, which was crazy. I think I streamed that year for about, no, not that year, that day. So when it released, I did a 52 hour stream and I was still not tired because I was just, yeah, I was having that much viewers and we, we were just completely annihilating everything in Reaper of Souls. Even though I kind of did not really like Reaper of Souls compared to the original Diablo 3. And why is that? Diablo 3 had trading, Diablo 3 had the auction house, Diablo 3 had really fun itemization, in my opinion. I think Diablo 3 had a really fun itemization because it was actually really hard to get good gear. So having good gear actually meant something um, where in Reaper Souls, everything just dropped left and right. Trading was completely removed. The auction house was completely gone. I mean, I had an interview with Josh in 2013 and I asked him about is the real money auction house being removed and he said yes and I was like excited about that but I should have kept asking so what about the normal auction house is that leaving as well but yeah they removed everything entirely uh, they upped the itemization everything was suddenly about legendaries and um, basically yellow items were useless uh, nobody even looked at them anymore they were just for materials so I did not play too much Reaper of Souls, to be honest. Um, I, I don't have much memory from Reaper of Souls. Just that the launch. The launch was insane. I had a fuck ton of viewers. And um, yeah, I, I was kind of struggling to see like, what am I going to play? So I don't have much memory uh, other than that I game hopped a lot in 2014 and 15. But I did get a dog named Ghost. And I hit 100,000 subscribers. I think I played a lot of GTA 5 in 2014 as well. Uh, and same for 2015. Together with some Diablo here and there. Even played League of Legends, City Skylines. I became more a little bit more of a variety streamer. Um, so yeah, but I got Ghost. It was a really cute puppy. Uh, still living in Canada. Kind of happy there. I mean, Canada compared to Netherlands. I mean, Canada has better summers. Canada has better winters, and Canada just has 
more fast food restaurants and all kinds of uh, beautiful stuff. I especially liked a w the root beer from a w incredible. And Tim Hortons. All Canadians love Tim Hortons. Tim Hortons, incredible. The iced coffee in the summer and the crispy chickens. I miss them to this day. I really miss them. 2015, more of the same. Not really any special year. I mean, I looked at my Facebook to see if there was anything crazy in 2015. Um, I kind of popped off in City Skylines. Um, City Skylines 1 was actually good compared to the second one, which kind of, yeah, don't really like it. Also, played a lot of Pet of Exile. Um, and I played some Diablo 3, of course, but uh, City Skylines is, is my main memory. But the best thing about 2015, Tank. I got Tank that year. Tank is my Belgian Malinois. Oh, and Ghost, by the way, um, he is a Samoyed. Or some people would call him Samoye, or, but I, I just called him Samoyed. If it's wrong, I don't care. It's like, whatever. You know what I mean. That's all that matters. But yeah, 2015, kind of mediocre year. And then 2016 arrived. In 2016, my Twitch, um, yeah, started growing less quick. Uh, there were a lot of moderation issues in 2016. I was asking Twitch, like, hey, um, I cannot see what my mods are doing. And sometimes I had to unmod everyone. There was a lot of drama in 2016, like the whole, the whole booger thing and <laughs> some silly stuff. And a lot of people being banned in my channel, but also um, trusting people that then ended up not being trustworthy. Uh, didn't. A lot of my subs would get banned by a random mod, and then I had to unmod everyone and uh, then remod some of them again afterwards. Uh, it, it was messy because we did not have chat logs to see which mod would do what. So it was, uh, yeah, it was a special place. But 2016 was also the year that Pokemon Go released. And back then, real live streams did not exist yet. So this was a gray area. And the way I would walk around, let me actually grab a second phone. Where's my phone? So I would have one phone like this, and the other phone was recording. So I would walk around like this. This, this was real live streaming, just like this. So this is how I walked around. And... For some reason, 10,000 people would watch me walk around through the city, um, Groningen in the Netherlands like that. A lot of really funny uh, moments happened, but my partner manager would often say like, you're not showing enough gameplay. You need to keep your phone pointing towards the gameplay. So sometimes I would just walk around like this, right? Showing where I am and uh, showing what's happening. I mean, at one point... There was a guy right in front of me trying to steal a bike and he got caught by the owner of the bike. And then we followed him for a little bit uh, until he like went inside somewhere. We just kept going. But yeah, that was uh, pretty crazy. A lot of funny things happened um, during Pokemon Go. But Pokemon Go ended up also being the reason why I lost my Twitch channel. And this is where uh, yeah everything uh Went down the drain, pretty much. Um, so, yeah, I was in the park at one point. Um, Tank was being uh, protection trained in the previous years. So Tank was still young, but uh, I think it was like two. And he, he did some protection training and he usually would have a muzzle on. Um, on one particular day, I decided not to have a muzzle on. And I was asking people like hey do you have a girlfriend and, 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 and just asking cringy questions you know everything for the views back then I, it was just what does the chat want and we, we just asked random questions to people and one guy just said no and then i replied unlucky and apparently one of the friends of that guy was nearby and he was not okay with me asking him that question I don't know. I, I guess it was kind of rude. So that I, I thought the way he reacted to it was also a bit uh, extreme. But in the end, I did not want to look for trouble, of course. I mean, I'm there just having fun. We're all playing Pokemon Go. It was just uh, a giant hype, and we're, we're just trying to entertain everyone and be friendly to everyone. No hard feelings towards anyone. <clears throat> I might have overstepped uh, asking such personal questions. 
I will never do real live streams again. I can tell you that. But um, the guy got super close to me and I was a bit worried because um, I was a bit worried that if he would attack me, that my dog would react. And, and yeah, I mean, obviously me training tank was just a hobby. I would never want tank to hurt anyone. And he still has never hurt anyone. I mean, tank is honestly way too sweet. He's a giant lap dog. Um, he might bark a lot, but he'll never do anything because he's a good boy. He's well-trained. Um, I stopped protection training in 2017, by the way. So I did that for three years and then I decided, okay, let's stop. But more about that in a bit. But yeah, this guy, he got really close to me and well, eventually he walked away. Nothing happened. But from the distance, they were calling me all kinds of names and I was like pumped with adrenaline, of course, because I was like, oh my God, what's happening? And um, yeah, I shouted back a bad word, a word that I will never say ever again, something that will never, ever leave my mouth again. And um, I got a justified one month ban for that, obviously. And I was like, okay, this is stupid of me. I understand that will never happen again. Um. I also had a second account named Ghost, named after my dog, Ghost. I also streamed on that in 2015 shortly because I got kind of tired of, you know, always being asked, hey man, are you going to stream Diablo 3? Because whenever I would play something else, that would be the question. Are you going to stream Diablo 3? So I decided I want to stream on Ghost and then maybe people will stop asking if I play Diablo 3. So it was basically an alt account. Um, <laughs> I fucked that one up a bit because people uh, quickly found out that I was streaming on a different account and I tried to uh, pretend like I was not me because I just wanted to play something else. That didn't work too well. And uh, some, some funny clips are of that somewhere on the internet probably. But yeah, so Ghost was my second account. And um, during the ban, they... Only banned King Kongor, but they did not ban Ghost. So when I was on my laptop, my laptop was still logged in on Ghost. Um, and at one point, two weeks into the ban, um, I was watching Zizzeron, uh playing Pet of Exile. I think it was Pet of Exile. Yeah, it was Pet of Exile. So I was just watching him and um, I obviously showed up in the, in the viewer list. And I got reported for ban evading. And um, suddenly I got an email a couple days later that my suspension for one month turned into indefinite. And that's, uh, yeah, that was a very dark day in my life. Very, very, very dark day. Um, that year, I also broke up with my girlfriend and I moved back to the Netherlands and I also deleted my YouTube channel with 24,000 subscribers. Why did I delete that YouTube channel? Because I wanted to focus more on streaming and I didn't want to make YouTube videos anymore. I just wanted to focus on streaming and, and, and not always be asked about Diablo 3. So, yeah, I basically checkmate myself pretty hard. So first of all, I live with my mom. I left my girlfriend. I lost my YouTube channel. I couldn't recover it anymore. I tried, but it was like uh, already gone for two months. So couldn't recover it. And now my Twitch account was indefinitely suspended. So I started appealing and reaching out to everybody. I did two appeals per year. So once every six months. And always I would get the same reply. Like... Um, that they're not going to do it. It was basically in a copy-paste. Uh, we reviewed your appeal, blah, blah, blah. Um, your account will remain indefinitely suspended due to a uh, breach of terms of service. So I kept appealing in 2017. I kept appealing in 2018. And basically, I had ups and downs. I was very depressed I did not do anything. I did have a lot of money saved up that I made from streaming. And so I just basically lived at my mom. 
2018, we had the whole Bitcoin craze going on. Um, I jumped in on that a little bit as well. I, I put 10,000 in a shit coin called ElectroCoin and I went to bed and the next day it was 80,000 euros. Then I sold that <laughs> and I put it in XRP and then went to bed and I woke up to 40,000. So basically 40,000 just evaporated. And then I cashed that all out and never touched crypto again. Congratulations to all the, the believers, by the way, because Bitcoin is crazy right now. But yeah, so 2018, um, appealing, and I made some money again, so I continued not working. And then 2019, still appealing, still living with my mom, still not working, still depressed, still very sad. And I actually barely played video games in those three years. I mean, I played some stuff off, off stream, um, and, and eventually, uh, started streaming on YouTube. Didn't work that well. Um, but yeah, so I, I played a lot of things off stream. Never touched Diablo anymore though. Never. Like I couldn't touch it anymore. Not at all. I don't know. It just gave me PTSD. Same for Pet of Exile. I could not play Pet of Exile. Just would get instantly PTSD. I would get so sad as soon as I would start that game up, because I always felt like, hey man, how would it, what would it have been like if I streamed this right now? Um, I, yeah, I, I, I think back about that a lot. So, but yeah, I never gave up. I kept tweeting, I kept reaching out to staff members and um, yeah, nobody could ever help me. Big shout out though to DJ Weed. Like he has been fighting for me and, and same for Ciceron. Ciceron and DJ Weed, they always replied to me. They always said like um, that they're going to bring something up to the moderation team and, and trying to get me unbanned. But um, it, it never helped, sadly. So, but yeah, so 2019, and this is actually a year where I started doing stuff again, even though, you know, still depressed, still sad, but I made a YouTube channel and I started streaming a lot of uh, Star Citizen. And that YouTube channel got up to 4,800 subscribers in a couple of years. Um, so that went pretty well. I mean, streaming on YouTube was pretty good for a couple of years because in the beginning, YouTube actually tried to compete with Twitch. They had the gaming.youtube.com. So streams were actually being pushed out to people. And I actually had 300 viewers, which was incredible. But eventually YouTube decided streaming is not our thing. Even though you can still do it today, but it's just, yeah, it's not the same. Um, and the, and the, layout, was, the layout is just terrible. You, I mean, it, it's kind of hard to search for streams unless you really want to search for a stream on YouTube. But you usually only see the streams of the guys that you're already subscribed to. But it's hard to find new people that way. Um, but yeah, that went pretty well uh, until it didn't go that well. So I started doing it less way less, sometimes only a couple times per month. Um, and I started tindering. I was like, all right, I need to do something with my life. I'm going to look for a girlfriend. So I met my current girlfriend on Tinder and that we had some dates and, but eventually she decided, eh, this guy, he still lives with his mom. He doesn't have a, have a job. I, eh, I, I don't want to do this. So she eventually told me that, and I was like, all right, okay, cool. But then um, a couple of days later, I was like, fuck it. Let's see if she wants to go to the movie. So I asked her to go to the movie, and she was like, I thought I told you that we shouldn't see each other anymore. And I just replied with a smiley. And the next day I woke up, and she asked me, which movie? And that's basically, uh, you know, when everything uh, started rolling, and uh, we're still together to this day. So that's really good. So when we started dating, she actually just got a, another dog, Millie. Oh, and that makes me think about Ghost. Ghost actually stayed in Canada with my ex-girlfriend. And um, yeah, he's still in Canada to this day. But he's not with my ex anymore. She gave him to a really nice family. And he's having, uh, having uh, his last senior years um, next to Lake Ontario. So he, he's, he has a good life. Ghost, Ghost is doing good. But yeah, so Millie is part of the family now. Um, Millie is just as old 
as our relationship almost five years now. So that is going well. In 2020, we started uh, living together. She still she was renting a home in the city, and I just moved in there. Um, wasn't officially a resident there, but I slept more there than I slept at home with my mom. And I got a job. I actually got a normal job. I'm not going to tell you what it was, but it involved helping people and selling stuff. Um, and the people were usually business owners. So that went really well. And I had a stable life. Um, I had to work in an office, which I didn't like. But 2020, that's the year COVID happened. COVID changed a lot of lives. COVID changed the world. Uh, COVID is yeah, absolutely crazy what happened. But for me, COVID was actually a blessing um, when it comes to work. I mean, obviously, COVID sucked. It, it fucked up a lot of people. It fucked up a lot of lives. It fucked up a lot of uh, jobs and, and, and a lot of futures. So obviously, COVID's terrible. But when it came to my job, suddenly I could work from home. And that worked so well. That fr even after COVID ended, working from home stayed like it, it became the norm. Um, eventually, we started going to the office like one or two days per week. But mostly being able to work from home was incredible. I mean, there was a problem uh, to get to work. Just work from home. No problem. So that was great. But work was actually going so well that I eventually even won a trip with management team to Finland. Uh, Finnish Lapland. It was incredible. And the next year, I also did really well. And I won a trip to New York. The New York trip, I did not really deserve, to be honest. Because there was another guy, uh, a friend of mine, that did way better. But um, something happened and he couldn't go anymore. So that's when I could go. So I was basically the second place. And I still got to go to New York. This was amazing. But that's already 2023. And all these years, by the way, I kept trying to appeal at least two or three times every single year. Every single time, always rejected, 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 rejected. I think in these seven years, I have reached out to every single person that I could uh, reach out to. Most of them never replied or just ignored it or just never got to see my messages. Um, some tried to help, but just couldn't because it's really hard to reach moderation and safety. Moderation and safety is the way that DJ Weed talked about it. He says like um, moderation and safety is basically in a bubble, a big bubble and Whatever happens in that bubble stays in that bubble. And getting into that bubble is very hard. So they are basically uh, almighty, all powerful. And they decide who gets banned and who gets unbanned. Um, but yeah, so I kept reaching out and I kept reaching out. And next to that, I just lived my life. Played some video games, uh, bought a PS5 and did a lot of Elden Ring. I uh, watched a lot of TV shows, watched the news every day. I became like a normal adult human being with a stable life. Um, we bought a home in 2021, the one that I'm sitting in right now. And yeah, life was good. Even went on holidays to Switzerland. So everything just perfect. Like the, they would say in the Netherlands, huisje, boompje, beestje. It was a very stable time for me. A very sad time here and there because I always tried to get Twitch back. And at work, I basically could never stop talking about Twitch and about you guys. Um, eventually in 2023, I think, or 2022, um, there was an announcement that the current CEO of Twitch was stepping down. And eventually a new CEO was uh, taking over. Uh, it was DJ Clancy. And um, DJ Clancy has a... <laughs> Instagram account. Um, at that time, a very unknown one. So very tiny. Uh, not many people knew about it. And it was public. So I could follow him. And I saw that I could just DM him. So I slide into his DMs. I told him my entire story and about all the people trying to help me. And I was asking him, hey, 
can you do something about this? Because I um, couldn't appeal anymore since 2022. So up to 2022, I've appealed. But in 2022, they introduced a new thing called appeals.twitch.tv. And here... If you would log in, it would tell you if there is a suspension or a indefinite ban. But for me, it was blank. There was nothing. And because it was blank, I couldn't appeal anymore. There was no way to email Twitch anymore and my appeal form didn't work. So DJ Clancy told me, hey, we're working on something for people like you um, to give them a second chance. And... He also, like, in the beginning, I was like, hmm, okay, well, I'll believe it when I see it. But then Quinn uploaded an interview with this beautiful new CEO, DJ Clancy. Like, he uploaded it on YouTube. And they also mentioned, uh, he also mentioned that they're working on this. So this is when I was like, all right, he's serious. They're really working on a second chance system for people like me. Turned out that this second chance system was already there for a while. It was called appeals.twitch.tv. So I uh, reached out to another guy that I do know that works at Twitch. And he looked into my account and he said like that there was a lot of bugs and, and glitches on my account and I should be able to appeal, but it's broken. For, for only me. So my account was really glitchy and bugged and probably because of the length of the suspension that I had. A lot of things have changed over on Twitch in those seven years and my account was basically always dormant. It was like there, but it was not there. Um, so he made people look into it and I made a ticket mentioning like, hey, apparently there's a lot of glitches on my account. Can you guys look into it? Because I'm not able to appeal my suspension. And one day when I was working, I suddenly got an email out of the blue saying, King Conger, you are now unbanned and you're free to use our services again. My heart stopped. I did not know what to do. I honestly felt like I was getting a heart attack out of excitement. This, this was mind boggling it was um in november on the the day that my grandma turned 95 so on my grandma's birthday she's still alive and well she's very smart and, and very healthy and yeah she's incredible but yeah the, every day every time that my uh, grandma has a birthday that is my anniversary. and um yeah it was one of the best days in my life i instantly told my boss like yo I just got unbanned. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'll be able to do proper work anymore uh, for this day. Um, and I instantly talked uh, to him. It's like, hey, I'm going to take a sabbatical starting uh, December. And I'm going to try full-time streaming, which I have been trying um, with ups and downs. I mean, obviously, after uh, such a long time, um, I still have all my 130,000 followers. But all those 130,000 followers are from seven years ago. A lot of those people might not be using Twitch anymore or have a new account, you name it, all kinds of stuff. So, yeah, but I'm just happy to have it back. And it's such a trip from the start to where we are now. I mean, it does feel like I'm starting over, but I am starting over with an absolutely amazing community. I am trying to do it full time. But Twitch has changed so much. I mean, there's so many more streamers now. Um, most of my followers might have moved on. They're all seven years older. Some of them have like multiple kids now, lost all their hair. Um, some of them might have, like I said, a new account. So much has changed. I mean, seven years is such a long time. And I'm just so happy to be back. It's, um, it's, it's been a trip. And I just want to thank everyone that never ga uh, gave up on me. Uh, everyone that has supported me all this time. It's, um, yeah. If you like playing games, then Twitch is for some reason always going to be part of that. I mean, you got drops, you got uh, special 
stuff that only happens on Twitch that you want to see there. Uh, look at Pet of Exo, for example. They do all their announcements on Twitch these days. They show their new stuff through other people, their streams. The gaming world and Twitch are just so well combined. And there's been a lot of drama on Twitch in these years. And I have seen so many times where people are like, oh, Twitch sucks and um, Twitch is going to die and, and, and Kick is way better. But I mean, I, ha I am one of those guys that have streamed on YouTube. I have streamed on Mixer. I have streamed on Kick. There is no comparison to Twitch. There is just something about Twitch, especially Twitch chat. And, 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 and the whole layout that makes Twitch just far superior. I mean, competition in the streaming world is good. And I do feel there's a lot of things that Twitch can still improve on. But the way it is right now, the community is a Twitch. I mean, if you want to stream, honestly, in my opinion, Twitch is the only proper place to really do it. Even if you only have one or two viewers. Nothing beats Twitch. It, would you rather get big on, on Kick or YouTube? Well, YouTube could be nice, but would you rather get big on Kick where there's a way less growing potential or would you get big on Twitch, for example? But in the end, you should stream for fun. It's making it in the streaming world is just by chance. I mean, I don't even know if I'm ever going to be able to do a full-time streaming anymore. Even though I have so many followers... Like I said, most of my followers might not be around anymore. But I'm just really thankful to be reunited with my Purple family. And I'm, I'm going to do everything in my power to never get banned again. Because I am a gamer and I like to share what I do. I like to talk to people. I like to show things. I like to make builds whenever I manage to to get enough knowledge uh, in that game. In Pet of Exile, I don't think I'm going to make builds very quickly because the amount of knowledge you need in that game to just make a single build, I think I'm just going to wait for Pet of Exile 2 and start making builds there. But I enjoyed making a build in, in Last Epoch. Last Epoch uh, is a wonderful game uh, and very easy to pick up. But yeah, what is going to happen for me in 2024? I don't know. So far, I've really enjoyed streaming. And sorry I'm rambling like this. I, I haven't made a long video like this for the longest time. But um, I just wanted to share this. So if I forgot anything, I'm sorry. But yeah, this has been my streaming... Uh, what would you call it? My, my streaming destination, I guess. I, I just want to advise to everyone that is streaming on Twitch... Don't get banned because it sucks on the other side. Even if you, people think the grass is greener on the other side, when it comes to Twitch, it's not. Enjoy your community, behave, and keep Twitch a wonderful, safe, beautiful place. This is the end of the video, guys. Um, yeah. Thank you for watching. If you watched everything, much love. Goodbye.